Okay, so let's discuss as the last part of the MP0 walkthroughs, how to submit your code for official grading. So um, the, the sort of high level overview here that's really, really important to keep, to, to keep in mind is that until you see your scores on the website, you have not earned that score. I don't care what you saw in Android Studio, I don't care what you thought you did or didn't do, until you see your score up here, and there are multiple places in which MP0 scores are visible. In this case, I'm looking at the continuing MP0 lesson at the bottom of the page. Here are my scores. I have not submitted anything yet. I'm gonna change that in a minute. We're gonna walk through the process together. But in general, until you see your score on the website, you have not earned that score. Or put another way, the score on the website is the score that you've earned on that point, that portion of the project. So whatever you're doing, I mean, I, I know that, you know, you might be working really hard and it's like really frustrating and you finally get it to work and you just want to breathe a sigh of relief and, and feel like you're done, but you have to make that submission. Do that before you go to bed, do it before you step away from your computer, just get, put the points in the bank and then you can relax. Okay. So let's walk around, do it. It's not hard. Um, okay. So I'm in Android studio. Now, all I've done at this point, I'm going to run the grade task. All I've done is add my ID to ID.txt, but that alone is sufficient to get me 10 points. So I'm going to walk through the process. You'll see here, I ran the grader and I got 10 points. So I'm going to walk through the process of getting those 10 points up on the website. Now, in order to do this, uh, we're going to use a, don't push that button. Cat's here. Sorry, she's trying to create mischief and mayhem like she normally does. Um, so until you, you know, uh, we're going to, we're using, sorry, I have a little off track, the cat's distracting. Uh, we're using a system for tracking changes to our code called Git. And Git is something that you'll learn a lot more about when you take CS128 and take CS1225, when you go on in your career as a software creator, it's a very, very commonly used tool. We are certainly not using even, you know, uh, half of its capabilities. We're just going to start getting you comfortable a little bit with some of the workflows involved with using Git. So here's the idea. When you use other, when you save other things, like if you're editing a document, you hit save and it's saved at that point. Git is different in two ways. Uh, actually, it's different in many ways. Um, but one of the ways it's different is that it can save changes to an entire directory of files. When we're working on a software project, we're usually interested in saving the entire state of the project, not just one file. The other thing that Git can do is it enables collaboration between other people, allows you to merge changes. That's not something that we're going to worry about too much. Um, but Git also saves every state that the repository was in. So every time you make what's called a commit, which is what we're about to do next, Git will always remember the state that the project was in at that point. So this allows us to see, for example, like what changed since yesterday or day before or a previous commit. It'll, it creates a history of all the changes in the development that have gone on in that project is tremendously useful information. So at this point now, you know, again, the, the contents of ID.txt have been saved on disk, but we have not yet created a git commit yet. So that's the first step in submitting is that we have to commit our changes. Um, so the way to do this is to open up the git commit dialog. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit this and this opens up over here. In the past, sometimes it's in a pop-up window, but this opens up now uh, along kind of in, in the context of everything else. And you can open and close this just using this little button over here as well if you want to. So what we see right now is that I've made changes to one file, which is id.txt, which is exactly what I expect. Now, down here, I have a chance. The other thing it does is it allows you to provide a summary of a set of changes. So on future checkpoints, we'll frequently need to make changes that span multiple files. When we commit all those changes together, we're allowed to provide a brief summary of what changed. And this can be very useful for people who are trying to understand changes that are going on in a software project. Like, you know, my collaborator changed a bunch of things yesterday, and I'm not exactly sure what those changes were intended to accomplish, but they wrote a nice commit message. And so I have a sense of what they were trying to do, right? So this is kind of just a high level overview. You don't have to get super detailed here, but it's nice to provide a little bit of sort of a high level overview of what happened. In this case, there's a very minor change. So I'm just gonna say added my ID to ID.txt. Um, you know, it's a small change, small summary, but 
it, it may seem like, well, it's obvious you, you change the file, but, but somebody might not, not know what's in that file, right? So anyway, okay. So now I've done this, I see two buttons. Uh, one is called commit and the other is called commit and push. Now, when you use Git, Git has a, um, in the directory where you have all the files for your project, there's also a special directory used by Git where it stores all this information about your project. When you commit, that's just a local operation. It doesn't save data to the cloud or automatically synchronize with github.com or anything like that. It just modifies the files in that special directory. So if you do that, we don't have any way of knowing that you've made any changes. So if you just commit and you forget to what's called push, nothing will happen. There's no grading process that started and you won't, you haven't made a submission. In order to submit, you both have to commit and then what's called push. So what a push is in Git is it takes the commits that you've made to the project and it sends them to, in this case, github.com. It sends them to what's called a remote repository and that can be a place, this allows multiple people who are working on the same project to collaborate. So for example, if me and a friend are both working on the same software project, we use github.com um, to collaborate. I make some changes, I commit them, I make some more changes, I commit them. When I'm ready to share them, I push them. And then my collaborator is able to retrieve them using something called a pull and merge them in to their own project and Git has ways of doing this very intelligently. So anyway, I'm getting way ahead of ourselves here. These are features of Git that you will find out more about in later courses. But for now, what we need to do in order to submit is both commit and push. One thing I wanna point out, if you forget, let's say you already hit the blue button because you're like, oh, we're doing a commit, okay, great. And it's like, oh no, it's gone. You can always initiate a push by going up here and just using this uh, push dialog. So there's also a way to just start a push. Like let's say you forgot, uh, to push and you're sitting there waiting for the grading to start and a few minutes have gone by and nothing has happened. You're like, oh wait, did I forget to push? And come back here and just open up that push dialog and that will, that will help. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is just commit and push. So that now opens up this push dialog, which allows me to push my changes to github.com. So, and, and it will tell me which commits are going to be pushed because a push can actually take multiple commits. So it's possible for you to commit multiple times and then push once and that push will take all your recent commits and send them together to, in this case, to github.com. All right, let's do that um, and hit push. Um, okay, so now you'll see down at the bottom, I, I pushed one commit. Now I'm going over here and you'll see already the website has told me that I have a commit being graded. So with this, and this is the first stage of the process. So when you uh, do this correctly, you'll see that a commit's being graded. It takes a couple of minutes. We have to check out your code. We have to run the tests um, where this is all happening on, on one of our backend servers. So, you know, uh, be patient. Um, if you submit around a deadline when it's particularly busy, this may take a little bit longer. It's usually not too bad. Um, but you know, this will take a few minutes. So, uh, but right away you see that there is a commit being great, right? So that's, that's great. Um, once that's done, I'm going to be able to see the result of that grading process below. Now, um, and then I'll be able to, at that point when that finishes, I'll have earned a score of 10 is what I'm expecting on this particular MP component. Now, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna wait for this for a few minutes, vamp a little bit. Um, oh, there it is, good, okay, cut me off. So now you'll see I've earned a 10 out of 10, sorry, 10 out of 100 on this checkpoint, right? Uh, this has my commit message. It tells me when I submitted, uh, we don't, whoop, sorry. Uh, we don't really care when you committed because we don't get the commits until you push. So what's on here is the submission timestamp. That was just a few minutes ago. Um, it took, I don't know, about a minute to grade. Um, and now I see uh, both the summary and there's grading output here below, right? When things go wrong, if something isn't as you expected, this should help you debug. But let's talk about a couple of the things that can go wrong. The first and most common mistake early on in the semester is that you didn't add your ID properly to ID.txt. So that's the first thing to check. Go back to the website, double check, the ID is what you have in ID.txt. Sometimes people forget and they, like, they miss one character or something like that, and that doesn't work out, okay? So that's the probably the number one source of mistakes. If you do that and you push, nothing will happen 
because that ID is how we identify you and we can only show you that message that there's a commit being graded if we can sort of um, convert that ID into an email address and that's what we do, uh, you know, that's, that's what that ID is for, right? Okay, so that's the number one probably most common mistake and the first thing to double check. Um, the other thing is that you've pushed, right? Make sure that you actually pushed your commits. So for example, I can go up here and go to get and go to push and it's gonna tell me that there's nothing, you'll see there's no commits that I can select because I've pushed everything already to GitHub. Um, so that's nice things about Git is it has some sense of what commits you've already pushed back to GitHub. And in this case, I don't have anything. So that's a good thing to check as well. The other thing that people can do um, and we've actually, this, this has become such a problem that we've actually built in a check for this. So we talked a little bit about um, being careful about not modifying the test suites. Now, when you're just testing, you are free to modify the test suites as much as you want because sometimes you want to, to you know, help your own uh, mental and debugging processes. So sometimes you want to comment things out or change the way the test works a little bit or just run one part of it that's giving you trouble. That's fine. But when you go for official grading, here's what's going to happen. So I'm going to make a change to the test suite. If I run the, uh, no, no, I don't want to change this. this. This already works. I want to change this. Yeah, let's change this one that tests the map center properly. So I'm going to go ahead and run the test suite. Now, I haven't made any changes to this other than adding my ID to ID.text. So I don't expect that everything should be passing, but you'll see that that test is passing because I commented it out. Now, as I we talked about before in the video about testing, we're going to use our own test suites when your code gets to our server. So this is not going to work out. But in order to prevent confusion, what we've done now is when you run the grader, let me show you what will happen. Um, you'll see that there's this first task that we run called check test fingerprints. And check test fingerprints has generated an error. And what it's telling you is you modified the test suite. There's a number of different ways that you can unmodify the test suite. Uh, you can take the copy that you downloaded and reinstall it. You can use Git to revert your changes to that file or undo your changes to that file. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but you have to do this um, before the uh, grader will run. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just undo my change. Um, and now you'll see that the, the grader is still uh, failing because I haven't, uh, it's mad at me for, I think something. Um, I don't know why. Let's see here. Oh, right, I haven't, um, I haven't committed, uh, committed the changes that, that increased my score, although I think I did do that actually, so okay. Um, anyway, uh, but in, in general, um, the, you know, the, the, the workflow here is, um, you know, we will check your test suites to make sure they are correct before uh, we run the local grader. And that's just really a step designed to help you make sure that, you know, your, um, your test suites are correct and that they're showing you the same result as you're going to get on the server. So that's another source of error, but hopefully we can help you out with that. Um, now, you know, the, the best thing to do is to start this process early, particularly for MP0. Once you have your ID and ID.txt correctly and you get the hang of this, you know, it, it'll be easy. Um, but, you know, you are, as I said before, I'm just going to come back to this to reiterate at the end, you are not finished until you see the score you expect on the website. Whatever else happens, and you know, it, it really, um, you know, some people really run into trouble with this because they say, oh, you know, I finished up and, you know, I passed that test case and then I, I was tired and went to bed. And, you know, the deadline was at midnight. I was done well before midnight, but I didn't push, right? Or I didn't commit. Um, so, you know, I know that you're going to be excited once you get some of these things to work, but don't finish, don't wrap up until you see the score you expect on the website. It's normal for gradient to take a few minutes. It's not normal for it to take longer than that. So if you've submitted something and it's stuck grading or there's no notification that it's grading at all, you know, that's a time to reach out um, to the core staff and start the debugging process. You know, make sure you pushed, make sure your ID.txt is correct and things like that. Once you get this down, it'll be fine, right? And, and at that point, you know, if you're running low on time and you submit 10 minutes before the deadline, everything should work okay. But on the first checkpoint, you know, make sure that you start this early, get those 10 points so that you under, you, you can kind of uh, confirm that everything is set up properly and then you'll be good to go. All right, so at this point, uh, finishing up, uh, getting the other 90 points on MP0 is your challenge for the remainder of the week. Uh, best of luck.